Hey guys, this is Vitu here, and today we are watching uh, Gemini's The Lost DLC Chapter 3, A Little Nightmares, uh, Little Nightmares Theory. And then we got the same description, like uh, always, so obviously I'll leave Gemini's channel link down in the description. Uh, obviously make sure to like the video, uh, he worked hard on this one, and uh, yeah, it'd mean a lot to him, and it'd mean a lot to me if you could go show him some love. So, yeah. We're just gonna click play and watch this. So let's get into it. The developers of Little Nightmares seem to thoroughly enjoy introducing us to lovable, relatable characters and spending a good amount of time letting us build a connection. Calling six them. relatable is Only crazy. To turn on us at the last moment and snatch away <laughs> any hope we've ever had of a happy ending. And in my pursuit of postulating potential scenarios, it seems that I've been no different. Previously, I collected up some skittering little puzzle pieces and attempted to put together some unsettling stories of my own. In the the animations are so good. I love LC. them. It's Two my favorite part of the, of the um, unfortunately fell of these videos is 100% the, the animations. But what of the third? Well, it seems that our handicapped hero was left with no choice but to abandon his rescuer. Jesus, he must have some arm strength after, to be able to hold himself up, I guess. With one hand. One arm, sorry. Almost. Hello. So place your bets, little ones. Could this be where we finally get a happy ending for once? It makes my heart race, I'm not gonna lie. a new friend on this journey, or perhaps even run into an old one. In chapter three, I see you. See, bro, I've, I've got chills. Bro, that... Model is. But first, the obligatory spoiler warning. <sighs> this video will, of course, contain spoilers for Little Nightmares. Little I always Nightmares forget to put spoilers in my videos, Nightmares like spoiler warning. I always Little forget. <laughs> I'm just products. glad that most of my fan base have played this concept the game. Purely speculative, and will therefore contain some entirely fabricated assets, which I will do my best to tie in with the existing law without deviating too much from the established <gasps> I... narrative. Now, with that that's where he got the idea from. Let's take a look at our next character. The girl with the braids. Who I may also call Spoon Girl. Moving I call her the Bloody Nose Girl. Also, quick disclaimer. I know that this girl has many names depending on who you ask. Oh. Spoon Girl, Nosebleed Girl, Girl with Pigtails, among many others. Bloody Nose Girl. Her most that's official what I call her. name, or at least a placeholder for it was actually revealed to me whilst answering our next question. Is Spoon Girl canon? As with the last two, Spoon Girl does have an episode dedicated to her in the digital comics. She does have a character model in the game files labelled Child 2, and most interestingly, her photograph can be found in oh. the nowhere, in which she is depicted using crutches. The picture was even named Crutches in the game files, which is what some people have come to believe is this character's actual name. Crutches? Or at least her official nowhere name. Now, okay. The previous That's a pretty cool name. Both opened with a twist to their tale. But given the end of chapter two, it seems we already have a solid idea of where this story picks up. After a seemingly very long time left to her own devices, being provided spoon after spoon, Jeez, she's moving so fast. To freedom, we are introduced to Spoon Girl as she emerges from a cavernous yeah. hall in yet another cell. Looking weak and defeated, she collapses to the ground. The sounds of the doctor's muffled grumblings <laughs> echoing through the hall, growing Yuck. nearer. Before the doctor's the doctor terrified me. If I'm going to be honest. It's horrible. Bathing the room in a nauseating blue light. Taking our chances, we take control of Spoon Girl and squeeze our way out of the gap oh afforded to us by the heavy cell door, only to be greeted with a haunting sight. Creeping down the hallway behind us is the Doctor, clutching an unmoving and as yet unidentified child in one hand as the other gropes at what appears to be a large pile of spoons which he has placed directly outside of the cell that we've spent the past period of time burrowing out of. 
We move forwards and around the corner, catching sight of the doctor, enacting his sickening ritual, a look of what could easily be mistaken for glee if his face weren't so warped by gravity as he pushes another spoon under the door of the cell, pressing his ear to the door as he awaits the inevitable sound of desperate metal hitting tile. But when it doesn't come, Jeez, this is he dark. throws the door open, shrieking in horror when he finds the cell empty. As we make a break for it into the staff cafeteria, the sound oh, of the enraged doctor slamming cell doors and rapidly approaching can be heard growing louder and louder behind us. Rounding the corner and catching sight of us as we make our way down the hallway, stumbling as he goes affording us enough time to grab what appears to be a mannequin foot from the cafeteria floor and Bro, toss it at the elevator button, causing it to open. Oh! However, running inside would surely have us cornered. Our best That's tactic true. is to call the lift, then hide under a yeah. chair. Let the lift doors close and trick the mad doc into believing we've already escaped to the upper floors and cause him to stuff himself inside the lift and head upstairs, killing the power upon his arrival and trapping us downstairs. With nowhere else to go, we double back on ourselves, grabbing Ghost Kid's discarded flashlight as we head back into the hallway with the cells, finding them all now closed tightly. But fortunately for us, the good doctor, in his haste, has left the cage door at the far end of the hall wide open. There you go. Passing through this exit will lead us to a dull and dingy staircase, littered with mannequin parts, presumably leading to a fire exit somewhere on the upper floors, some of which seem to have collapsed, preventing us from going higher and forcing us to exit through the only open door a few levels up. Yeah, what okay. okay. Used to be an entirely new department, we head into a reasonably large waiting room. But this one is not occupied by mannequins. A familiar clicking sound rattles through the silent hall before the static is, uh... of the television disturbs the surrounding oh God. Of the waiting area. Why did I think it was going to be the janitor? A familiar tune starts to play. I as we happen upon a disturbingly familiar character. Wait, his is, back to us. Is it the janitor? Distracted by the television, sits the janitor. Yeah, I, Although his I got appearance there. looks quite different, he wears no hat. His overcoat replaced oh by God. a hospital gown, and his blemished, eyeless skull completely exposed. Creeping behind our recognisable foe, we will notice him discard a pamphlet. One that only those of you who are familiar with the Mom. secret ending to Little Nightmares 2 will be familiar with. An advert for the mall. God. With his long bandy arms now blindly searching for the remote. Oh, he's blind, avoiding isn't he? Avoiding his long grasping arm, will have to creep across the room, making sure to stay quiet as he surfs through the channels. Some of them loud, some of them silent. Jord! <laughs> Why was Jord on there? We will notice what appears to be a reception area with an open <sighs> window just out of reach. We will need to take the chair from beside him and drag it across to the desk below the reception area, stopping and starting as Roger flips from channel to channel every few seconds. Ah, oh, okay. It's clear that we will only be able to move the wooden chair across the yeah, like the teaser Joel's back. The television is tuned into a station that is playing music. Why is he watching George? Otherwise, who knows what would become of us. We cross into the reception area and move forwards into a consultation room where suddenly an electronic alert seems to sound, which we will soon recognise as Roger being called into his appointment. As he appointment. abruptly shuts off the television and the sounds of his footsteps oh, start you're in... making their way to We're us. in the appointment room. We will need to pull open a vent grate on the ground and clamber inside, just managing to pull it open and get through as the maskless janitor pushes open the door and hears us making quite a racket. God, I hate we your sounds. We the chute and cascade into the dark unknown, narrowly avoiding his grasp as his grotesque arm reaches into the vent behind us as the sound of his ghastly, desperate wails echo off the walls of the metallic shaft. Our red-haired heroine reaches the end of the vent, just out of reach of the janitor's spindly fingertips, as we push open the opposite side of the ventilation gate and tumble out into a familiar room. A room okay. 
which answers why Roger was here and results oh. in our first achievement. Repeat. As we are plunged into the mask room, oh, that makes yeah okay that does make sense right now. Being closed tightly, leaving the path on the left available to take. The door to this room is also closed, but visibly damaged in its lower half. Picking up a heavy metal pipe from the ground nearby, we're able to bash open the splintered timber. The momentum of the final blow sending our character and her weapon tumbling through the gap and into the next area, where a sinister scuttling can be heard, oh. accompanied by an eerie instrumental. As we Inst mono and six, oh, okay. Spoon Girl will be accosted by animated oh. mannequin hands in this area. Okay, there we go, Our yeah, okay. Will be to fight them off as they systematically dart from place to place, leaping to catch us off guard. After handling the situation, eh? We are free no. to continue <laughs> along our way. Crap joke. Back through the room Never tell a joke again. A, dead end, a gate with a gap in the center. But there we go. I, I'd like to fight the hands again. That was fun. It was terrifying, but fun. Is able What's to that? Interact with a small roll of bandages, which can be found laying near the middle of the room. However, just as we pick them up, the sound of a door opening can be heard coming uh -oh. from the way we just came. Then a mortifying sound of scuttling, as well as the scraping of metal on tile. Sensing impending danger, we toss the bandage up and over the gap in the that door, would be... giving ourselves a makeshift rope ladder. That would be horrible. Which we are going to need to climb quickly as the nurse comes the to nurse. Oh my the gap god! The the door, scrambling towards us with reckless abandon. Spoon Girl shimmies up the rope ladder, barely making it through the gap in the metal fencing before the nurse uses her seemingly weaponized prosthetic arm to swing for us, cutting the bandages off at her side of the fence, leaving it as we find it as mono, before throwing her body angrily against the fence and letting out a hideous shriek. Pushing herself against the bars and allowing us to get a semi-decent look at her before she turns and shambles off the way she came from, the echoes of her hooked hand scratching on the ground falling thankfully more distant as she scuttles away Breathing this is de that's definitely the scariest design so far of this area that would uh, if that was in the game that would definitely be the scariest the boss of little nightmares to 100 percent like we find the elevator doors up, the teacher's scary but that's just with the power being dead and no way to call it, we're left with I, no I, choice but it's to just horrible. the cables attached to the counterweight and make our way to the floors above, finding an open ventilation shaft on the left side which we will have to jump to and crawl through. After spending a little longer than usual navigating this vent, we are brought out on the inside of this small office room, through a vent near the floor, finding the door to this room, surprisingly, open. There we go. Not for long, however, as the telltale sounds of the nurse's clanging prosthetic oh. require us to hide under this chair as she scrambles into the room, searching for something inside the room before she comes out, slamming the door and locking it behind her, punching a patient number into the ticket machine and then turning to leave. Once she's gone, Spoon Girl is then free to vacate her hiding spot and head back down the hallways, using her flashlight to now see where she's going. As and then she's going to meet her demise. Our helpful little heroine helped the ghost child. Unfortunately, passing through these gates will have us enter a cutscene. A strange sound can be heard as we get closer to the room, culminating in Spoon Girl shining the flashlight upwards, only to reveal the nurse painting a bloody eye on the wall above the beds. Noticing us, she swoops down from the ceiling and snatches us up. And the, yeah, and then that's how Mono the gets the flashlight. Leaving it where we discover it as Mono later, before the screen fades out, resulting in our second achievement. Intensive care we unit, I see. in a new area, laying in a bed. Oh, she's not dead. Kind of. We are in fact strapped to a hospital bed, but as the camera pans out, we discover that the entire room seems to have been designed upside down. Oh God. Piles of assorted mannequin limbs haphazardly piled below the beds, and the nurse is in the room with us. Though luckily preoccupied with a rack of prosthetic limbs on the wall, swapping out her hooked hand for a sharp bladed one before she skitters out of the room through a doorway. 
a doorway which assumedly leads to an operating theatre. Considering the next sounds we hear are those of whirring equipment and pain struggling. Now with a window of opportunity, Spiral is free to make her escape, her thin frame wriggling free of her bonds, causing her to fall the distance to the ground. The impact, thankfully somewhat broken by the huge pile of mannequin parts, and the sound of doing so drowned out by the noise in the next room. Crossing the room, we notice that we can climb another small mound of mannequin parts to reach the doorway, crossing into the next room, which is also upside down. The furniture seems oh my to God. gravity, having been nailed to the ceiling for the convenience yeah, This would be a really cool um, design. This, room, this however, would be really cool to see in game. Limbs, and our pint sized heroine is too short to reach the door frame to move into the next room. But close to the entrance, one of the beds hangs limply from a rudimentary suspension system, which is fraying and weak looking. The frame of which can be reached by jumping from the ground, and upon climbing some of the way, the rope will give way, oh God. violently, and causing the bed frame to come crashing down. Is she going to be strong enough to lift uh, to pull the bed? Fortunately, the height of the frame prevents it from flattening us, and also will serve as the platform to aid our escape from this room. Once we manage Damn, to push she's pretty it strong. across the room to the point below the door frame and climb out into the next area. We hop down into another area which is considerably larger than the others. This appears to be where the nurse stores the fruits of her labour, as we oh. discover what it appears she has been cultivating in the operating room a few doors down. Is she the person making the skin mask? This area is adorned with large sheets of drying flesh, pinned and hung around the room and dripping into drains and buckets. Ugh. Shelves containing heavy looking folds of skin and jars full of organs decorate the room as it becomes apparent to us that the nurse's role within this horrific establishment is, is to collect skin with oh. which the doctor creates God, that... Yeah, of exactly. Course, our task is to get out of this room in much the same way as the last, climbing one of the shelves and then shifting across to the shelves over the door. Unfortunately, the poorly structured shelving unit will tip over as our climbing compromises the balance of the weight. As the shelf crashes down, Ugh. it will momentarily close the distance between ourselves and another hanging bed frame, which was just out of reach. It's almost been we crushed twice in the, like, the span of five minutes. The shelf falls and crashes noisily, taking dozens of glass jars with it. Which forms a pile of debris God, and a makeshift nurse ramp, is not going to be happy. Which we can now use to exit the room, but we must do so quickly, as this catastrophic clatter echoes yeah. through the large room, grabbing the attention of the nurse, who can be heard bursting through the doors of her operating chamber and clanging violently in our direction. We rush up the bookshelf ramp and out into the hallway, a massive chamber full of debris and bed frames. The nurse's haunting shrieks reverberating through the halls as we find ourselves in a massive open space at the bottom of the fissure where Mono and Six platform across hanging bed frames above us. With nowhere to go but forwards, we push on, taking shelter in an open elevator shaft. Squeezing oh. through the gap in the doors and grabbing at a vent. I like that you're uh, like we, the nurse we'd be exploring places we saw as different characters. I think that's really cool. Them and forcing them open as debris starts to fall down around us, and Spoon Girl manages to squeeze into the vent at the last second as our shrieking assailant gains entry to the confined space. Just as the sound of buckling metal can be heard above us, followed by the loud and terrifying scream of the lift above free-falling down the shaft in our direction, which slams into the ground at terminal velocity, crushing the nurse below it and filling a dusty wave of pressure through the vent, blasting us through I don't the know if I heard that right, but how would that work for Six and Mono? Black, resulting in our last achievement. Wait, is she, does she survive? Skin crawler, Jesus. As the screen blinks back to life, no way she's back. movement indicates that our red-headed friend is indeed alive, having survived her harrowing encounter and made it to sit. I'm at, uh, watch another so spoon. Hooray, oh my you god. Got a happy ending, right? Well... God, no. <laughs> because as He's the back in the room, isn't she? Out, we find that the vent opens into a single lonely room. A room with one locked 
I swear to God, if a spoon comes a through that now. Space in the basement of the hospital, not far from where we started our adventure. Oh my the God! The exit now blocked by tons of mangled metal and pulverized stone. So yes, she did survive by the skin of her teeth, but given the circumstances, it's better of her to escape, die. She may wish she didn't. Exactly. So that brings us to the end of yet another chapter of our speculative DLC. This is definitely the best one. What did you guys think of A hundred percent. Would you have liked to see things play out a little differently? Let me know in the comments section below. Yeah, this is a hundred percent the best you one. You guys seem to be enjoying this series so much. I absolutely The, the design of the creative. monster. And I have been reading some of the kind words that you guys petrifying. have been saying. Fibs ah! to... <laughs> And then... <laughs> and then Fibs is there. I have been reading some of the kind words that you... Well, okay. Uh, DB96852. This feels so legit. No, it's not the actual game. What does that say? You guys have been. Oops. Um. Feather. Feather in. Feather in his mommy? Is that what it says? I love your, I love your voice, dude. You should start doing what if videos for Little Nimes Game. like, 50! The best one yet, brother. I can't wait until chapter 3. Insane. Yeah, short and sweet. Bristella, the storytelling is incredible. I enjoy every moment. Keep and up I just the good work. Say that I... If Bandai doesn't hire this guy, we must start a petition to get him hired. Yeah, that's true. Each and every one of them. That is true. This one was a little shorter than the last. And if I was to develop this into a I... real, fully I love this. Game, these areas would obviously be expanded. But as just one guy with little to no game making or artistic skills, I am trying my best. All I have is Microsoft Paint and my imagination, so... It was a lot of fun to explore some of the discarded yeah, that, that's in the Yeah, that's super cool. ...and apply them to this chapter. Thank you This? Chapter. Thing? This is the scariest monster yet. Like, the principal... The principal and the barber, they're scary. But this is just on another level. Like, you can tell Gemini, you put a lot of work into this one. A lot of work. And I'm glad he did, because this, this is my favourite one. Definitely. This is Thank incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, but we're not done yet. Chapter 4 will be in the yes! works before long, and you may want to subscribe and ring that notification bell in case you don't want to miss it. But until then, little one. Bro, I can't wait until chapter 4. That's game over. So who else have we got? We, we've done the lollipop kid. We've done Spoon Girl and we've done the Ghost Kid. Who else is there? There's so I remember there was six. There was the oh the 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 what's his name? The toddler is that his name? So it'll probably be the toddler next, and that might be it, because the only ones left are Mono and Six. Then and we've seen how their story plays out. Maybe Jem and I could do something like. Yeah, like a what if, like that one comment said, a what if, like, what if Mono never found Six? What if Six was never taken by the hunter? Maybe he could do stuff like that, because that'd be really cool, I think. But this was incredible, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, guys, make sure you do go show um, Gemini some love. Uh, as I said, I'll leave his channel link down in the description below. But yeah, this was just, this was amazing. This was super cool. Uh, and yeah, as I said, it was definitely my favorite one. So guys, that's going to be the end of this uh, reaction. I do have another theory coming soon, so please stay tuned for that. I'm actually editing, editing it as I'm, not as I'm recording this video, but I'm editing it. Well, I stopped to watch this video, um, so I'll be editing the both uh, around the same time. And I'm trying to get the video out. It's it's about a 16 minute long video, and I want it uh, to be perfect. I want to make sure every uh, edit I make, because there's a lot of information and a lot of evidence, I guess you could call it, a lot of evidence for my theory. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned for that, and hopefully I could get it out maybe tomorrow or maybe even today. So guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.